Hey guys, my name is Kalpesh and welcome to my YouTube channel Automotive Crux. If you are eager to learn about automotive technology, you are at the right place. So please subscribe this channel and stay updated. Hey guys, today I am going to explain you guys the dynamic axle load. Okay. So uh, first we need to understand what is the importance of uh, dynamic axle loading condition. Uh, when we are trying to derive the accelerating acceleration performance or the braking performance of a vehicle, uh, the first and foremost step uh, we need to calculate the tractive efforts. And tractive efforts can be easily uh, calculated with the help of the axle loading condition. So this is the reason why we need to uh, go through the dynamic axle load. To understand the acceleration and braking performance of a vehicle, we need to calculate the dynamic axle load. Okay. So for the sake of simplification, uh, we are considering that uh, a vehicle is placed in an arbitrary plane and it is placed at a, a gradient of theta at a gradient of theta so here is the uh, angle theta okay and the oral pictures uh, shows that uh, whatever number of forces which are acting on the vehicle's body they are they are shown here now again I am uh, trying to emphasize on the uh, lump mass approach so uh, according to the lump mass approach we we are assuming that the whole mass it is assumed to be concentrated at a single point that is called the center of gravity so in this case also we are considering the center of gravity point and all forces which are acting on the body uh, considered in this figure they are acting at the single point okay so uh, uh, let's see this uh, step by step of uh, what kind of forces they are acting on the uh, this vehicle so uh, first we can say w this okay this w indicates the gross weight of the vehicles which is acting on on a cg and uh, weight as we all are aware that uh, uh, weight direction of weight it must be uh, towards the direction of center of gravity of earth and uh, for the sake of simplification of a calculation we uh, generate uh, two components of the uh, this uh, weight uh, one which is perpendicular to the plane and one which is parallel to the plane the perpendicular to the plane it becomes a w cos theta and parallel to the uh, plane it becomes w sin theta now apart from this gross weight considering the friction uh, friction which is resisting to the uh, vehicle's movement okay we have a one dl number force which is indicated by w by g into m okay it is dl number force now wf and wr represents dynamic load carried by wheels normal to the road surface so this is our uh, we can say area of interest okay we are trying to derive the uh, axle loading equation so that's why we can say uh, this is our area of interest this wf and wr represent the dynamic load carried by the wheels and we are trying to uh, derive the expression for the wf and wr this fxf and fxr fxf and fxr these considering the vehicle's movement here we consider that vehicle is moving upside to the this hill okay to this gradient so that's why considering the, uh, with respect to the, this this direction we can say that fxf and fxr they are in the forward direction they are tractive efforts which which is propelling this uh, which are the motive force you can say then rxf and rxr they are rolling resistance they are rolling resistance okay so uh, due to this fx f and fxr they are tractive force due to this force of course the resistive frictional force must be there so this rxf and rxr they are 
rolling resistance here in both cases in case of attractive force and in case of a rolling resistance this subscript okay subscript x and f for example this subscript x it indicates in the longitudinal direction and subscript f it indicates the front side so if we are, if we are trying to uh, say fxf that means it is the attractive force in the longitudinal direction for the front axle likewise fxr that means it is attractive force in the longitudinal direction for the rear axle okay then we have a, a aerodynamic drag force if we are considering the speed of the vehicle uh, which is again the resisting uh, force resist resistance to the motion of a vehicle so we are indicating in the opposite direction okay then in case a vehicle is towing some another vehicle or towing something back uh, at rear side okay then uh, we have one another force which is called the hitch force okay and again uh, considering the two components two perpendicular components of the hitch forces we have a two force rhz and rhx this rhz it indicates the perpendicular component and rhx it is the hitch react hitch force in the longitudinal direction that means it is parallel okay so i hope uh, it is clear the force terminology uh, provided in we are trying to derive the expression for the dynamic axle load with the help of equilibrium condition of the vehicle so the load on the front axle can be calculated by summing torque about a point a and assuming the vehicle is not accelerating in a pitch so the sum of torque at point a is zero okay sum of torque at point a is zero but the important condition is vehicle is not accelerating in pitch okay this is we can say a uh, important condition without which we can not write the second statement that is sum of torque at a point a is zero okay with the help of this point we are trying to assume that our vehicle our condition is it is in equilibrium condition now considering torque at a point a is zero we can write this equation okay this wf so uh, wf into l plus aerodynamic drag force multiplied by the uh, perpendicular distance dl lambert's force multiplied by the perpendicular distance about point a likewise hitch forces so this is the basic equation and by rearranging this equation and equalizing the this term wf into l we are getting the final equation for the front axle load front axle load so front uh, front axle loading condition we can calculate with the help of this equation okay this is fundamental equation and uh, this is nothing but the simple uh, summation of all torques divided by the wheel base divided by the wheel base by applying the same method and with the help of the same assumption if we are trying to uh, uh, take the sum of torque at point B at point I'm saying B then we can get the equation for the rear axle this one okay rear axle nearly they they will look like same okay so for example uh, we are considering this is our front axle uh, dynamic axle loading equation okay now we have a two case in, in first case we are considering that the vehicle is parked vehicle is parked on a level ground static load on the level ground that means vehicle is parked on a level ground uh, level ground that means theta it is equals to zero level ground that means theta it is equals to zero and as our vehicle is it it is in static condition so the rest of all forces they becomes zero okay except the gross weight okay except the gross weight 
so here the whole term this term w f it is equal to w c cos theta minus r h x h h minus r s z d h minus w g divided by g a x w by g into a x into h okay the all terms okay as the vehicle is in parking condition and there is no towing force is there so all forces they are becoming zero so finally we are getting the equation for the static loading condition wfs static front axle load must be equal to gross weight multiplied by the c divided by r likewise the static rear axle load must be equal to w into b by l where l stands for the overall wheelbase of the vehicle the another case that we we are considering that is the low speed acceleration okay low speed acceleration accelerating on a level ground at a low speed again emphasizing on the words in the brackets accelerating the vehicles on a level ground at a low speed level ground that means again theta is it is zero so whenever wherever we have a theta we can put the value of theta it is equals to zero in this equation in this equation for front axle load and considering the low speed when we are considering low speed there is no uh, drag resistance there is uh, no rolling resistance we can say so considering the low speed acceleration condition uh, only the forces which are existing now they are the gross weight and the dl lambert's force due to the friction okay so again our this equation will be modified and we can say w at it becomes w inside the bracket c divided by l minus ax divided by g into h divided by l okay or uh, whereas this w into c by l w into c by l which is which indicates the static front axle load so again you can write the dynamic axle load for low speed acceleration in terms of static load like wfs minus w divided by g into ax into h by l and like likewise you can calculate the uh, dynamic axle load for rear axle too for the same condition so uh, this is uh, what we can say with the help of this we can calculate the dynamic axle load and once we get the loading condition load w then with the help of newton's second law we can easily calculate the uh, tractive effort which is produced by the vehicle okay. and with the once we have a tractive effort we can easily predict the acceleration performance and the braking performance of a vehicle thank you thank you for watching my video uh, please don't forget to subscribe this channel thank you